Uh, good morning, and thank you for joining us here today, a place in our city which will now be affordable forever. Way to go. <clears throat> today we are launching Salt Lake City's Community Land Trust. This program is a recommendation in my affordable housing plan, Growing SLC, and works to promote long-term affordability in our city. The land we are on now consists of two parcels, one completed home rehabilitated by the city's housing team and a vacant lot where a second home will be built. It is also our goal to build two separate smaller units known as ADUs behind each primary home, which will provide additional opportunity for housing and potential income for the new homeowners. This can be accomplished with approval of a new ordinance before the city council allowing housing options like ADUs in the city. Through innovation and thoughtful design, all of this will be accomplished in a manner keeping with the character of our neighborhoods. Through the Community Land Trust, these homes will be forever protected for low and moderate income families who may otherwise have difficulty reaching the goal of home ownership. We are talking about families in our community making just over $50,000. These are teachers, new police officers, and young people starting new careers. Once these families choose to move on, they will be able to sell their homes, take earned equity, and pass the home on to another family who needs assistance to make their dreams a reality. As our city continues to grow and gentrify, the Community Land Trust will ensure there are always spaces of housing opportunities in Salt Lake City. We hope to have six properties in the land trust in the next six months and continue to grow the program over the next several years. Salt Lake City will always retain ownership of the property placed into trust, protecting the price of the land from speculation. The Community Land Trust is just one way Salt Lake City can and must begin building a groundwork which can support affordable housing. Our housing plan, Growing SLC, is a five-year implementation plan to help lay this groundwork. Many of the recommendations in Growing SLC, like the Community Land Trust, are strategic ways we can begin moving in the right direction. The City Council will have the proposal for the Community Land Trust shortly, and I ask them to take action as soon as possible. On some of my recommendations, we will undoubtedly have tough conversations and robust debate ahead of us. But as I said during my State of the City address, we have a moral imperative to ensure Salt Lake City is a community where all people, regardless of race, age, economic status, or physical ability, can find a place to live. To resolve the affordable housing crisis, Every neighborhood must be supportive of new families, new people, and new ideas. And I will add, affordable housing will look different in every neighborhood. Along 4 South, it will be a large building with micro units and incubator space. And here in Poplar Grove, it will be affordable single-family homes with space for additional rentals. But regardless of the neighborhood, we must remember affordable housing is about people. Those struggling to find a way out of homelessness, individuals working a $10 an hour job, new professionals who want to build a life and home in our city, to the families that will soon call this place home. Thank you again for coming to help us make this part of our city affordable forever. Melissa? Thank you so much, Mayor. I am so thrilled to be standing on the first, a few of the first parcels of our community land trust that will mark our commitment to affordable housing, wealth creation, and the implementation of our five-year housing plan. 
When these parcels were purchased for the intent of affordable home ownership, we imagined that they would be affordable for 5, 10, or 15 years, and that felt like a big deal. But knowing that these houses will be affordable for now and for generations to come, long after I go, is a very powerful thing. The initial stages of the Community Land Trust program is going to focus on home ownership. But it's not limited to that. The beautiful thing about the trust is that it lays the foundation for all types of affordability. And we welcome the opportunity to put multifamily models, single family models, and duplexes into the trust. As many of you know, current market conditions have essentially excluded households making about $60,000 a year. The mayor mentioned $50,000 a year as well from home purchase. When we look at a median sales price of $227,000 and upwards, it makes it impossible for a working household to afford home ownership. To give you an example of the cost savings, if you were to purchase a home at $227,000, the price would ultimately be reduced with the removal of the land cost to $160,000 and in some cases as low as $130,000. That is an affordable price. Further, we're committed to families gaining equity in our model, and we anticipate that on a home that costs $227,000 or $160,000, that they would gain over $55,000 worth of equity in as little as five years. This program is no small commitment, and as we have contemplated its purpose and use, we have done so carefully in a way that considers expansion, low administrative costs, and room for improvement. I want to spend just a few minutes speaking about the logistics to provide some clarity on how this will work. The land will be owned by the city. This ownership structure creates community through partnership. The city's continued ownership of the land is not in place to penalize or enforce, although at times I imagine that may be necessary. The ownership is representative of our commitment and partnership to the homeowner to make sure that when someone moves in, they are ready for the many responsibilities of home ownership, or, or perhaps when a crisis happens, they have a partner committed to helping them stay in their home. And lastly, they have someone that is not only invested in the house itself, but the community that is built around it. Secondly, the homeowner will experience the same benefits as home, of home ownership that we all do as homeowners. This means a mortgage payment, house repairs, the feeling that comes with building roots in a community, being part of that community, and ultimately building equity for their future. Thirdly, the program is going to target residents at a lower area median income than we traditionally see. This means that we are providing access to home ownership for people making roughly $50,000 a year. We look forward to working with our community partners to figure out the appropriate growth for this program and to make sure the opportunity is created throughout the city. The wonderful thing about this model is it's meant to be flexible to the unique needs of neighborhoods. This means that while affordability and preservation will always be the goals of the programs, there's a lot of flexibility for how it is built, who it is built for. Here we have single family homes as the mayor mentioned, along 4 South, that's going to look very different. In some communities, it might be an eight-unit small apartment complex that's at risk of being turned for higher rent rates, excluding lower-income families. The land trust would prevent that from happening. We look forward to working with the mayor and the council to make this land and this program a real intangible future for a family that loves this neighborhood and would otherwise not have access to it. Thank you so much. <laughs> and we're so pleased to have Andrew here with us. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Melissa, and uh, the whole team, obviously. I, I appreciate you all being here today in Poplar Grove. Um, you're standing uh, on uh, a site that has set vacant for quite a while. I know this. I walk by here quite a bit. And uh, I was excited when I came through a few, well, maybe a month ago or so, and saw the house had been renovated and they were selling both properties. And I thought, all right, we have a lot of people who are coming in and flipping homes, which is great. Um, it's a wonderful way to get the homes upgraded, um, get people to buy a home that they're ready to move into. 
uh, turn over the neighborhood, also get some um, new housing stock in here. I was even more excited to find out that the city's doing that now. <laughs> and uh, this means a lot, and, and it means a lot because if we look at other cities across the, the western U.S. particularly, or larger metropolitan areas, even bigger uh, than Salt Lake City or Salt Lake County, they are dealing with these same issue, issues just on a much larger scale. And we know the larger the scale, the harder it is to wrap your hands around a problem. Um, find solutions, because solutions are plural in these situations. One thing is not going to solve affordable housing issues. This is one part of that. The Community Land Trust is something that's been done elsewhere um, that for all the reasons that's been, that been stated um, can really be a foundational piece of what we can offer to my children, to your children, to families coming in after us um, to make sure that everyone has an opportunity who wants to be in Salt Lake City. When I think about this neighborhood, I'll tell you a little bit about Poplar Grove because every neighborhood is going to have similar things. But Salt Lake City is well positioned for be, to be a very, very desirable place. This is probably the most affordable neighborhood in the city right now. And we just heard that it's not that affordable anymore. There's a lot of reasons for that, but a couple of them are because right now, look at the size of this lot. It's larger than you're going to find other places in the city. You're also going to see a major bus line right here on the street next door, the 516, which runs to two track stops downtown. You're going to find that a block going east, you have Poplar Grove Park, which is a brand new well, there's a baseball diamond, which has been there for many, many years, um, and also a brand new um, playground for kids. If you go another two blocks further, you've got the Jordan River, and you've got a daycare center, you've got a church, you've got another church a block west of here. Uh, you've got three public elementary schools in a very short radius and a new um, charter school just west of here for kids. You've got a major um, shopping area less than a, about a quarter mile from here. Five blocks, right? Smith's, Campos Market. Um, this is a prime location in the city for somebody who wants to be in the, in the urban environment but cannot afford what we have anymore. As we do this across the city, we're going to find a lot of wonderful developments for infill like this where even now property prices are high enough that it's hard to build in some places. You're going to find a turnover in the housing so there's more opportunity. The more housing we have, the more it can come down to reasonable levels to, for all of us to afford. It also helps us as a city, as we said, to make sure that it stays affordable. If we keep on the track we're going, Salt Lake City is going to get better and better and better and more and more desirable and therefore more of a demand, right? There's going to be such a demand here. We need to make sure we have opportunities in the future. And being able to hold the land uh, and allow people to come and improve it themselves and build equity and keep moving up to different housing as they see fit for their families. Number one, it keeps families in the city, which I think we're going to be at risk for in the, in the coming years. It's going to be harder and harder to have a family in this environment unless you can find the appropriate size house for you and a yard for kids, right? Um, it's also going to allow us to make sure that we have some places that are going to be affordable. And we have to make sure we do that. We can't ignore the reality um, that the city's only as good as the people who want to live here and can live here. So I appreciate the mayor's initiatives. I appreciate very, very deeply the Community Land Trust and the entire housing um, plan going forward. As a member of the city council, I fully endorse it. Um, I plan to take as much action as I can, as the city council can on this. Um, and make sure it's implemented in a way that's healthy for the entire city, um, that we have plenty of public input on things like uh, accessory dwelling units, which the mayor just t spoke about, um, about this land um, trust, about the way we're investing our money into, into housing and affordable housing particularly, and make sure that we all understand why this is important and we can get some, um, some strong consensus around this. So thank you very much for being here, and thank you, Mayor. the support and the work that everybody has done. This is a team effort as, as are most things that go on in government. Um, but we have an amazing team that should be celebrated. So thank you for coming out and supporting.